Now, when an elected official in the United States stops you from speaking, that is a violation of the First Amendment. And you know what? We're, we're going to fight for our free speech and we're not going to let it go. My name is Chris Tomlinson. I am a columnist for the Houston Chronicle and the San Antonio Express News. And I'm the author, I'm one of the authors of Forget the Alamo, The Rise and Fall of an American Myth. We named our book Forget the Alamo to be deliberately provocative. No one we know actually thinks we should forget the Alamo. We think it's going to be a historic site for the rest of human history. But I think we have to forget the myths. There was no line in the sand. Davy Crockett did not die fighting. He was captured and executed. Uh, the people there were not Texans or Texians. Most of them had arrived in Texas within the last six months. The big premise that we share, and it's not our original idea, um, is that most historians today accept that slavery was a major issue in the Texas Revolt. Uh, the Mexican government was trying to outlaw slavery in Texas. They'd been trying to do it for a decade. And the Anglo economy in Texas was 100% dependent on slaves picking cotton. Um, so just making that assertion uh, is what has gotten us into trouble because that's the part of the Texas Revolt that most school children don't learn in public schools. And Texas lawmakers at the legislature have been telling people what to teach in Texas schools and universities since the 1880s. Uh, they would fire professors who didn't stick to a script. And that is still true today. It is still required by the legislature that teachers say the people at the fighting at the Alamo were heroic. One of the directors at the uh, Bob Bullock Museum contact, contacted us, uh, my co-author Brian Burrow, as soon as he heard about the book. He says, we really want to have you here. It fits with our programming. And then about less than four hours before the event, I get a phone call saying it's canceled. That they had come under political pressure and that a member of their board had ordered them to cancel it. I think what we're witnessing right now and what our book has got caught up in is a culture war about how we're going to think about our history and whether or not we're going to stick to these myths that are rooted in white supremacy or whether we're going to take a more expansive view and include the points of view and the viewpoints of people of color and their experiences in the state. There are going to be people whitewashing history and making sure that the truth is not taught. And I think um, that is what their voters want. And until uh, they start losing elections, that's not going to change. You know, the worst book reviews we received were from uh, historians who said, huh, there's nothing new here. There's nothing controversial in this book. What's the big deal? Uh, I take that with pride because you're right, we gave a faithful retelling of the history.